thoracic segments. Let me, you know, point out again that each pair of legs that find on left and right, they arise from the thoracic segments. There are three thoracic segments, the prothorax, the mesothorax, and the metathorax. So each thoracic segment bears a pair of uh, legs. Now, the wings, there are two pairs of uh, wings in the class that has wings in the you know, example of organisms that has wings. We have an insect that has wings. There are usually you know, two pairs of uh, wings. And uh, the first pair of wings arise from the mesothorax, while the second pair of wings arise from the metathorax. The wing that uh, arise from the mesothorax, they are usually called the elytra. Elytra. This is the other, you know, the other pair of wings that covers the body. When you look at cockroach, the black, you know, the dark wing that covers the body that you can see is the elytra. Then the second pair of wings are the membranous wings. We call them membranous uh, wings. And uh, usually these membranous wings are for flat. They are for flat. While the elytra, which is the first pair of wings, is to protect the body, particularly the abdomen from injury. These are some of the things that we should know about the class uh, insect. If you look at the second class, that uh, we call class arachnida. Uh, little differences that exist in the visuals of this organism. You know, the class arachnida. We have given examples that uh, an example include our common spider that we have at home scorpions, then we have grinds and the teeth. Teeth, like the dog, the teeth is a member of the class and leader. Now, if you look at our shirt that uh, we have with us here, you will discover that we have an example of this organism here. Now the first thing that we are going to take note of is that rather than having three body divisions, the spider, which is an example of the craft arachnida, has two body divisions. And these two body divisions are called cephalothorax and abdomen. I'll write that one up so that you can see it. Or cephalothorax. Cephalothorax. So rather than having three body divisions, it has two body divisions. Cephalothorax and the abdomen. Now what is cephalothorax? Cephalothorax is fusion of both head and the thorax. When the head and the thorax of an organ is fused together and you don't have clear line of demarcation between the head and the thorax, it is called cephalothorax. And then you see the large abdomen. So what you see here is the cephalothorax and the abdomen. Now, another figure that you see is that rather than having three pairs of uh, walking legs, this organism or organism belongs to this group, there are four pairs of walking legs which are here as you can see. They are four pairs. And these four pairs, you know, arise from the cephalothorax. All of them arise from the cephalothorax. The abdomen does not bear any walking legs. Apart from this, this organism, or organism belonging to the class, you know, Arachnida, they lack antenna, they do not have antenna. So we don't have if you look at the spider, our common spider at home, you see that they do not have a antenna. Now, we may not be able to see this here, but we know that
that spider makes a uh, you know webs and it uh, uses a part of the body that is called the spine legs. Spine legs. It is these spiders are on the ventral side, that is the portion of the abdomen that faces the ground. That is the ventral side. You see the two you know, fissures that are here. They are what the organism used for you know, to strike. They use it for spinning to make the webs that they used to catch. You know, they are they are free. Apart from that, let me also mention that uh, what is peculiar to this you know class anatomy is that they do not have compound eyes. They have simple eyes. For example, this spider has eight simple eyes. Has eight simple simple eyes, eight simple eyes. So there are eight of them. If you look at this, you have eight eyes. Has eight simple eyes on this body. And those, you know, eight simple eyes are altogether called ocel. Ocel. Called ocel. To get all of them, as simple eyes. Does not have a compound eyes? Now, why are we making why are we looking at these things? As a student of biology, one, you should be able to recognize organisms when you see them. One, then two, you should be able to talk about the observing features of these organisms and uh, possibly if you, if you will need to handle this organism, you should be able to tell us uh, the difference between any two organisms because that's the basis of classification. When we classify organisms into different groups, we are saying that they have fissures that differ from one another. So if you have any two of them, you should be able to make differences between you know, the, two, the two, either by the fissures that are present in one and the fissures that are not present in the other one, or by looking at the number of a particular fissure that is present in one, and how it differs from the number of that same fissure that is present in the other one. Or you look at the color of fissures of the body, you look at the nature of parts of the body, then those are the fissures that are used to categorize this organism either into one class or the other one. Before we close for today, I would like us to uh, see if we will be able to make few differences between the two organisms that we have, uh, we have mentioned. For example, we 